Hey there my friends and welcome to my beach. I'm gonna just adjust my camera a little bit. There we go. Hi and welcome everybody, quilty friends and others, whoever's tuning in this morning. Maybe for a view or a sound of the Oregon coast. It's so gorgeous. Overnight, quite a fog rolled in. You can see it's still burning off this morning. But always that sound in the background. We have our windows open so we can hear it all. It's so lovely. Let's see. Oh, a few comments already. Hang on a sec. Daisy, good morning, Sue. Still on vacation. Love you. And Oregon was gorgeous. Someday I'll get to go there too. You bet. Oh, from Tennessee. You're a long way from the Oregon coast. Kathy, good morning. Mary Rose, first time live. Yay! Been watching the videos for a while. Teresa, good morning. Thanks for taking time out of the day. Well, you know, Teresa, it's just not really a hardship. You know if you've been watching the last few days that I brought some quilting with me and remind me to tell the story on that today too in progress on my K facet quilt. Sharon joining from breezy southwestern Minnesota. Good harvest weather, awesome. Kathy Parnell, good morning from Florida. Mary Rose, weather in Maryland is beautiful today but getting hotter as the week goes on. Last gasp of summer. There's no summer left here. It's definitely autumnal feeling. Beautiful, but autumnal feeling. Carlene, good morning from Bize. Jealous you're at the beach and I'm not. Yes, it is very gorgeous. I'm sorry I wobble the camera every time I touch it. Anyway, Crochet Mama, yeah, I made a live. Jana Bowman, good morning. Jana's practically a neighbor in Spokane. And hello, Wendy, morning from Texas. Angie, record setting heat in Minnesota this week. Wow. Gail Stafford in Oklahoma. My husband, who's sitting just a few feet away inside. <laughs> vacation coffee after the live. I've had my vacation coffee hours ago. I've been up for hours. <laughs> Peggy, good morning, Jennifer. And that looks like the Oregon coast I remember from my childhood. Oh, so beautiful. This is our happy place. Joan, your biggest fan here. Absolutely. Enjoy your days off. I am. Maisha, good morning, Sue in Clarksville, Tennessee. Trish, good morning. Mandy, good morning, Georgia. Aaron, Ohio. Kim, this looks like my perfect weather from Ohio. Teresa saying good morning to Dave. Hope you're still on, Dave, and caught that. Wendy, good day from Chile, Colorado. Brr. And Zanita, good morning from Buffalo. Well, that's all of you. Paulette, there's another one chiming in. Well, welcome. I'm Susan Smith and I'm coming onto YouTube Live every day until October 27th. It'll be a full 30 days of just morning chats about things that surround machine quilting, topics that surround machine quilting. So clearly I'm away from my studio and so we're talking about things that we can talk and don't have to necessarily see this week. Hang on a sec, something's happening on my camera. There we go. Okay, so, and this morning I thought we would talk a little bit about quilt batting. And I was reminiscing, is back in the day, my mom was a quilt maker too. And my childhood, which would have been 70s and 80s, you know, it was kind of novel to get kind of prepackaged backings. I don't even remember if it came on rolls then. I don't remember the consumers could can buy it on rolls anyways. But we bought it in packs and it was the Mountain Mist 100% polyester lofty fill. And my mother made a bajillion quilts with that stuff. So I will never malign it because they were the quilts of our childhood and we slept under those quilts. There were seven of us kids and so we were a house of quilts with polyester batting. <laughs> but the thing about that polyester batting is it was, it was not, it was in the early stages of engineering, let's just say. And over time, it would just disintegrate inside your quilt into shreds and bits and dabs of batting but really no warmth was left so you'd have a lump here and a, and a thin spot there and that was all you were left with but still that was all we knew well over time batting manufacturers of course kept up to the demand and started developing new and different kinds of battings and one of the first uh, popular ones to come out was the warm and natural all cottons and what a step forward that was it had a kind of a low loft and so it was easy to work with because it was fairly flat and definitely smooth and you didn't have this hill and valley stuff that you had with that super fluffy polyester. It was easy to hand quilt through. It was pretty easy care. You know, cotton had a similar shrinkage to quilts, so quilters loved that. Moms loved not putting flammable polyester in their kids' quilts. So there was all kinds of reasons to love this 100% cotton batting. But again, over time, characteristics you know became clearer that there were some other things we'd like to see in battings so others have been developed as well so I, I don't mean to bash brands here at all there are uses for all the different batting types that are out there 
but I'm gonna kind of focus today on what is my favorite for my style of quilts, which is the very all-purpose family use, I call them couch quilts. So I gravitate towards 80-20 battings, meaning they're 80% cotton, 20% polyester. The advantage of that is you get the good things about cotton. You get the fact that it does shrink a bit and looks, you know, antique quilty, that quilty feel we all know and love. It's easy to work with. It's mostly natural fibers, but that 20% of polyester adds a little bit more loft to it, which I personally like because it shows up quilting nicely and it adds durability to it. And one of the features I like about it is it reduces the creasing of the batting. So one of the things I don't care for in 100% batting is that when you fold a quilt and store it for any amount of time, even a weekend, it remembers those creases and you often cannot get rid of them again. And so that little bit of polyester content, that 20%, really reduces that and you get a more drapeable soft feel and less creasing. So that's why I love 8020. From there, there are multiple brands that make it. And so, you know, you feel free to choose the band that's the brand that's most convenient for you to buy. But again, I'll tell you a couple of my favorites. I've been using Hobbs for years. Um, in my opinion, Hobbs's 8020 poly cotton is, is the perfect intersection of, you know, durability, usability, um, comfort, and wearability, and also price economy point. But I have recently found another brand that I've quite fallen in love with, and I bet you'll be hearing more about this from me in the future. Um, it's called, the brand is Winline, and I've been talking to the lady who whose business it is, and she has been selling wholesale and vendoring at quilt shows, and she's just working now on becoming available in more quilt uh, supply stores. So you might be seeing it in stores more in the future. But I'll, I'm gonna be talking with her about that and maybe how we can make that more available or promote the product. What I love about the wind line, so it's the same 80-20 blend, cotton poly blend that I love, but it has an even softer hand. It is so incredibly silky smooth, I absolutely adore it. Let's look at a few questions and then we're gonna talk about, or comments, and then we're gonna talk about a few more bad things. Jen in Pennsylvania, hoping you're enjoying vacay. Uh, hoping you get a chance to talk about your cumatic experience so far. I'll make a mental note of that, Jen, and I'll try and make that a chat topic for one of these mornings. It won't be today, I don't think. Um, Sherry, good morning from Kamloops. I'm going to buzz over the good mornings because there's so many of you. So hi to everybody. T from Texas, do you ever bind your quilt on the frame? I do occasionally. I know how to do it, and it certainly has its good purposes. I also, I have done a lot of binding at my sit down machine and I have it set up at a, a nice big workstation and I've got that sort of down to a science that I can do so quickly, honestly faster than at the long arm. So for me, I, I opted for that one. I think you could put, pick either one and get fast and efficient at it, but absolutely yes, you can apply binding. There we go, back again. Okay, let me back up to the comments. I don't know if you guys got that, but I was totally frozen at this end. Binding quilts. Wendy, I still have a really old bag of Mountain Mist in my stash. You know, it's good for stuffing pillows. And honestly, I occasionally do still get quilts from clients and, and that's what they bring me to put in it. It's up to them. Mandy, my first quilts were poly batting. I prefer 80-20, which is warmer to me and very pretty drape and no bearding. That's something I didn't mention, but that's true. You don't get the little fibers as badly that come through. You know, it's it can happen with any batting under certain conditions, needles, fabrics, all those things are factors, but there's much less of the bearding with the 80-20. Diane, my early quilts had two layers of fat bat. They were tied. I'm now in the process of taking them apart and re-quilting them. Funny you should mention that, Diane, because just a few weeks ago, we moved my, my dad and stepmom, and so packed up their house and moved it. And among the things that came to light was this old, um, comforter that my mom had made before she passed away and it probably was much before many years before that in my childhood but we used to raise sheep and my mom would she had the carding wheel which was about mm, 12 or 14 inches wide and you would roll your your um, wool fibers on that and make a bat that was 14 inches wide and about 18 long and it was fluffy wool like pure 100% straight off the sheep wool and she would lay those out kind of like a checkerboard and make comforters and same way they were tied and we treated them like a duvet so she would 
put the whole thing in a pillow slip, tie it all, etc., and then make like a pillowcase to go over it, like a duvet cover to go over it. And that's the part that we would wash because we lived on a farm. <laughs> you did have to be able to wash stuff. But it's funny that you would remember that because the same type of feel. It was very duvet feeling and holy smokes, it was warm and gorgeous. Okay, so back to a couple other kinds of batting that I love. There are so many, we won't be able to touch on all of them, but one of my favorites is bamboo. Um, partly because it's renewable, it's a great resource, and it has superior drapeability. It is incredibly, incredibly soft. I absolutely love that stuff. And Winline, this company I've just become acquainted with, um, she sent me a complimentary queen size one, and oh my word, it's gorgeous. I can't wait to do up a quilt with it and feel what it feels like done. But to the hand, it's just silky and absolutely soft. I absolutely love it. And then another favorite that I've used is 100% silk batting. Now I've never used that in a bed quilt. Where I used it was I've made a couple of quilted coats, garments. So the first one I did was a child's full length coat from a 1950s pattern. And that was my first attempt at making a quilted coat. So I wanted something that I could quilt my layers and then use that quilted bit as fabric. And then I proceeded to cut it as though it were the outer part of my coat lined it, etc, etc. And it worked really well. The silk is super fine and lightweight and so it, it lent itself very well to that purpose, to, to treating it then as one single layer of fabric. And it wasn't too thick to work with to sew that coat. It was great. So I have since done more and it, it's definitely my, my quilt of choice for that. Lots of people still chiming in. Kathy, bamboo batting is my favorite. Yes, I totally agree. And I think bamboo has a certain amount of fire retardant qualities naturally so I see people doing that in kids quilts quite often or sometimes organic bamboo if that's you know concern about resources and those sorts of things bamboo is a great choice and it's not bad for price it's more than 80 20 blend but it's not bad at all Anne is asking have you used an 80 cotton 20 wool blend yes I have Anne and I would say for enjoyment of use and for family quilts that would be my second choice actually you get all those benefits of cotton that I mentioned earlier. And the wool does the same thing as poly in that it gives it a little more loft. And the wool brings to the table natural insulation, warm when you need warmth, not heavy and not hot when you don't need it. Does that make sense? So I do love that one as well. It, again, it's a little more pricey and most people tend not to use it commonly, but it's a great choice. Personally, I actually love 100% wool batting, and most of the brands out there nowadays do a version of the 100% wool. It's the loftiest, other than going with the poly, 100% poly, it would be the loftiest. It's nice and fluffy. It shows off quilting, and it's super lightweight, so it makes a light feeling quilt. Um, I use it for quite a few of my own quilts. I, I don't always encourage clients to use it, or at least I start by asking the questions, who's gonna have the quilt and do they know how to care for it? Because it is a little bit more fiddly. It is washable, but you don't wanna put it in a hot washer or a hot dryer or you're gonna end up with because it is wool, right? So a person's got to have a little bit of knowledge about how to care for it, but it sure does feel lovely. Teresa, I've never tried either bamboo or silk. Can you use the silk in a bed quilt or a wall hanging? For sure you can in a wall hanging. I have not used it in a bed quilt, but I wouldn't be surprised battings now are are made with that end in mind best suggestion for you would be to go to a manufacturer's website and read about it Hobbs I know has a ton of education about their battings and so you can read and they'll give you a rundown of what purposes are some of the best you know what the batting best choice is for that purpose whether wall hanging bed quilt etc and thanks, I have one that I'm waiting to use now. I can't wait. I love to use 100% wool. Yeah, it does feel so, so, so good. I love it too. Okay, any other great questions before I go? Kim is commenting, I like bamboo, but it seems so thin to me, not really warm. You know, I'm thinking back, Kim, and I don't know that I own a quilt that has bamboo batting. I've done, I've quilted it for other people lots of times. And I think, I, I think my reasoning is kind of the same as yours. I'm like, this doesn't feel, it feel like a quilt and so I tend to shy away from it and also it's not one that I buy in rolls so so I don't know the answer you might want to try it out though at least on a small quilt and see what you think of it and how it feels okay K 
Karen, I donate all my quilts, so I use 80-20 as there's no way to know how they will be cared for. But know those for Nick, you get washed in hot water. Yes, really good thinking, Karen. You know, know the purpose for which it is intended and that can influence your decision for sure. Um, Crochet Mama, have you talked about the size of thread you used? Did I miss that one? Actually, I did talk about it a fair bit on yesterday's episode. And May again, thread comes up so often. Carol, our bed quilt has a silk batting. It's great, warm without all the wrinkles. Good to know. There's someone who's tried it and knows. Uh, Mandy is saying bamboo is good for summer quilts or for hot places like Florida and Georgia. Good to know also. See, I've never lived in a really hot place, so I would not have known that. Wendy, here in Texas, they want us to use the thinnest batting possible or no batting. Is there a batting that will still show up the quilting but not add heat? Like, silk is the thinnest one that I know of. Um, I have known people to use a flannel sheet as a bat. I mean, that would be thin also, but it is still a layer. Sherry, which would you recommend for a quilt with multiple seams that result in bulk at intersections? To me, that's not an enormous factor, Sherry. Like having a batting is not gonna make the seam much worse or much better. Do you know what I mean? Put a spoon foot on your machine if you possibly can to go over those thick seams. But the difference between a cotton or an 80-20 or 100% wool is not going to make an appreciable difference in the ease of quilting that I don't feel like. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna head back into my mm, second or third morning coffee. <laughs> Whatever you guys are doing today, have a great day. And remember to hit the like if you're enjoying these episodes, like and subscribe and click the bell so that you get notified. I'll be on every day live from now until the 27th of October. So I will catch you tomorrow. Have a great day.